Are you ready? Oh, yeah! From parts unknown and into your home, this is the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. <laughs> now, here's your host, Groovy G. Hello there, folks, and welcome to the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. On this episode, we take a closer look at a belt design that was so popular, it was retired, then made a comeback. I'm talking, of course, about the classic WWF Intercontinental title belt that's coming up right now. You're watching the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. For your official Groovy G Belt Podcast merchandise, check out www.groovygshop.com. This is what's known as a classic WWF Intercontinental title belt. This particular design made its debut on TV on September 28, 1985. Mean Gene Oakland presented this belt to then-champion Tito Santana following an angle where the previous IC title, which was a trophy-style title belt on a green leather strap, was smashed against the cage and destroyed by Greg the Hammer Valentine. The idea was this new title would symbolize a new era for the title and Santana would be a part of that new era. Era. Santana eventually lost the IC title to the Macho Man, Randy Savage, and the belt very much became a stepping stone to the world title. Now, this particular belt that you are seeing is made by the original maker, Reggie Parks, and is similar in design to the one that was used on TV. However, the biggest difference in the artwork on this version is it has a WW block logo, as opposed to the WWF logo that was used on the belt that was used on TV. Now, Reggie Parks and Dave Milliken were allowed to make versions of the belt with a WWF block logo up until 2016. Now, nobody can legally use that logo. The WWE charged around a $1,000 fee to use that WWF block logo, and that fee was passed on to customers, so a lot of belt collectors decided to use an alternative logo, such as a crown or FWF, or in some cases, like this one, a WW logo. Now, the WWE has also trademarked this WW logo as their legend. Legends logo, so it too is now unavailable. WWF block logo belts will command a premium price because the artwork is exactly the same as the belts you would have seen on TV, and they can no longer be made, so the scarcity means a higher price. Now let's take a look at this particular belt in more detail, starting with the male snap boxes. On the end you can see the Reggie Park signature stamp and the Park signature snap box tooling. Moving across, we can see the Starburst tooling, which is another common feature of Reggie Park's belts. Now, the original IC title that Tito Santana debuted did not have this Starburst tooling. It was much less intricate and just had a simple beveled line around the border. On that original belt, the side plates were also the same size. This one has a smaller one and a bigger one. The original belt also had a recessed WWF block logo on the main plate, and that was painted red. Now, in my interview with Reggie Parks that you can listen to right here on the Groovy G Championship, Chip Belt Podcast, Reggie told us that he would sometimes be requested to make changes to the leather cuts on belts, and other times he would just do them as he felt they looked better. And considering that he has literally made thousands of belts, we may never know the exact reasons why the change in the side plate sizes, the leather tooling, and the recessed logo. Moving on to the main plate, and you can see the swells at the top, the word intercontinental, the stars around the globe, heavyweight wrestling champion, and the compasses at the bottom. Now, like most non-logoed or alternative logoed belts, the artwork on these belts is slightly different to the ones that were used on TV and the WWF block logos. Now, I'm not going to go into all the differences because they are the biggest telltale signs that a belt might be a bootleg, an illegal, unauthorized copy. The leather work is usually another one, but because this belt has an alternative logo, it also has some subtle differences in the artwork from a block logoed version. Now let's move over to the right hand side and we can see the two smaller side plates. On these the figures are reversed so they're facing the main plate. 
Here's the WW logo plate, the female snap boxes with the gold tip, and like all real belts, it is one solid piece. Flipping it over, we can see that all the belts on the back are covered by one solid piece of leather, making it smooth to wear, and we can also notice the curves in the buckles. Now, this is done to make sure that the belt fits snugly around the waist when it's worn. You're watching the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. For your official Groovy G Belt Podcast merchandise, check out www.groovygshop.com. Now, I mentioned an interview with Reggie Parks that you can catch right here on the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. And in that episode, Reggie went into major detail about how belts are made. Once the artwork is done, it's printed off onto a negative. That negative is placed onto a zinc plate, and the plate is placed into an acid bath, where some areas are eaten away, while others are protected by the film. Now, here is a very special bonus for all you good people watching the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. This here is some real artwork of the side plates and the logo plate for this particular belt. And this here is the real negative used in making this belt. Now both these artwork and the negative are from Reggie Parks' personal archives. Reggie gave these to me so we could have a better look at them and understand the process a little bit more. As you can see, the artwork from the sides and the logo plate are exactly the same size as the finished plates, as is the negative, which fits exactly over the main plate. As I mentioned before, the WWE has trademarked this WW Block logo, so this particular alternative logo is no longer available. But I still think it's a pretty cool piece of belt making history that I wanted to share with you right here on the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. Now, the WWE does make a replica of this belt with that WW logo, but honestly, comparing any replica to a real belt is like apples and oranges. It's still a beautiful replica, don't get me wrong, but as with most replicas, there really is no comparison comparison between them and a real belt. So there we have it. That is a Reggie Parks made classic WW logoed intercontinental title belt. And for all of you good people watching the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast, a special bonus of some real artwork from Reggie Parks' own personal archives that were used in making this particular belt. Now let's take a sneak peek at what's coming your way on the next Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. On the next episode of the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. This is Richard Simpson. I'm up next on the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. That's right, folks. The king of bling himself, Richard Simpson from Simpsons Restoning, joins us on the next episode of the Groovy G Championship Belt Podcast. In the meantime, make sure you don't miss a thing by subscribing to this YouTube channel, and you can join in the conversation on Twitter at Groovy G Belt Show or on Facebook. Until then, take care. It's bye for now.